Good morning, everyone. I'm sitting on my porch. It's nice and sunny out. You might hear some traffic in the background, and I have two wind chimes I forgot to take down. So you might hear the wind chimes blowing in the wind. But uh, God is good to us. He's awesome, and I want to encourage you today with God's Word. We're talking about the two witnesses today in the book of Revelation. We've been talking about end time events. And for as, as sure as the sun is shining and Jesus came, we're just about, uh, we're on the passion, week of passion for Christ. And life is different today. We're not going to be able to worship in the house of the Lord. But we are the temple of God. I want to remind you that you are the temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. You and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit so we can commune with God. And when Jesus died on the cross, there were many things that were blessed to us, most of which is eternal life, is a free gift. The moment you receive Christ as your Savior, you are saved forever. The blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you. He empowers you with His Spirit so that you can live on this earth for His glory. You know, God's purpose is always higher than what we see. Right now, we're experiencing very difficult times with the coronavirus. We're being told a lot of different things. At times we wonder, okay, what, what is true? We know it's here. It's not a hoax. It is here. And so we live in the state of New York. I want to welcome all of my church families from Tonawan Indian Baptist Church and High Point Community Church. I am very grateful for all of you, and I miss you all, and I'm thankful I can come out uh, in this way to uh, you know minister with you and, and fellowship with you I think that's the biggest thing we miss we, we love the word yes we want it we need it we love the fellowship of the saints and that's you know after church you sit down and you, you know, fellowship with other folks around you and uh, it's, it's, it's missed and uh, Hebrews 10 25 does say that we would not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. For a time, we've been asked uh, by our government to uh, not gather together. And being prudent in that, it is not that we are uh, obeying man over God. God has told us to obey those who have the rule over you. So in this sense, it is a medical emergency. It is not the condemnation of the Word of God. Now, if it were to come to that, the Bible says we're to obey God rather than men. Right now, we're abiding by the truth of God's Word. We're living by it day by day, and we should have our personal relationship. So if that kind of went uh, by the wayside for a while for you, I'd encourage you to get back in the Word, back in prayer, and even pray with fasting. So before I go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Although on, on some fronts there's destruction and death, I pray for all those families that have lost loved ones already and for those that are in the hospital uh, on a ventilator or, or getting better. Thank you for the, the hydrochloroquine that uh, has been given and we're grateful for that, Lord. But we ask, Father, that as people have lost loved ones, they can't have a funeral not like we normally do. They can't have people come and, and console them. So Father, I thank you that you are, the, you are the great comforter. I pray that you'll comfort those. I pray that you'll give our President Trump, Vice President Pence and all his team to uh, give them great wisdom, divine wisdom, Lord, to fight this evil uh, coronavirus. Lord, I pray against it. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you are on the throne and prayer changes things. Guide us now into your word as we talk about the two witnesses. And Lord, we will be forever grateful for your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And if there, is, there are those who are listening in that don't know you, I pray, Father, that you will help them to realize that there's only one Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. And we come by faith. We trust him. We believe he died for us. Thank you for Easter. Well, it's 
we would call it the resurrection day. We think of this week, Lord, this week of passion that Jesus went through. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. Thank you, Holy Father, that we can come to you at any time constantly in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God, for the power of your word. Now touch us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, the two witnesses are going to be in the middle of the tribulation. We've been talking about that. If you're, if you're, I'll just give you a little bit of a review. We are now close to the end of the church age. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and he ascended into heaven after he rose again on the 40th day, the church began 10 days later when the Holy Spirit of God was given. And then the church began almost 2,000 years in existence now. So we are the same church that was, re was, was brought forth in the early times. So we are still Christians. We are Christ followers. We follow him because he loved us and he died in our place. And he's called us to follow him. So it's, it's a joy to know the Lord. Uh, we are saddened for those that don't know him and don't realize yet. Uh, during this coronavirus, uh, lives have been taken out. We have uh, acquaintances that are in the hospital uh, fighting it right now. One gentleman named Tim was on uh, a ventilator, and, and uh, I don't know if he, I'm pretty sure he's still there, but there's some sign of improvement, so we're thankful to God for that. But for several, uh, there was no hope. Death was at their door. So I need to mention right now, if we just never know when we're going to leave. I would ask you to be prepared to meet the Lord. And how you're preparing yourself is by believing in Jesus Christ. If you know him, you're his, you are prepared. As Christians, though, we are called to be more like Christ. As we uh, give up the uh, residence of our own life and, and want to live our own life, we, we allow the Holy Spirit to live his life, God's life, through us so that we can be the people of God, to honor the Lord, to bless his holy name, and to give honor on earth and to help one another. Yes, we want to do that. So each day, each week that goes by, more revelation comes as to what's happening. Hopefully, prayerfully soon, we'll be able to come back and worship together. Even on, on Sunday, I need to mention uh, we wanted to do something outdoor, but uh, because of all the things that have gone on in other parts of the country with some Christians defying the government and calling the government down and that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to honor them. We should be praying for them. We should not be selfish because we have God with us. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we're going to have to worship this way even on Easter Sunday. And just for a time, I have spoken with the local officials and, and uh, they agree that the church is essential. Yes, we are essential. But at this moment in time, even President Trump is calling us to stay in uh, because the virus is passing. So pay attention to what's being said. I know it breaks my heart that we can't gather either. But as the leader, as the pastor of the church, my responsibility is to watch over the flock. And so if, if we were to gather and something happened and somebody got the virus, I, I would never be able to live my, with myself knowing that I had the opportunity prior to make the right decision and to honor the Lord. And I know it's going to break hearts that we can't come together even outside. But um, I, we want the best possible relationship that we can have with president, write down local officials, mayors, town supervisors, people that are in our community that are afraid. And if they were to see us gathering, uh, things could happen in a negative way very quickly. So to avoid all of that, we will come out again on Easter Sunday with a message and uh, some music, and we're going to worship God together. We're going we're gonna to do what God wants us to do. Now, there will be a lot of people that disagree with me, but I look at it this way. God didn't call anyone else right now but me to lead Tonawan Indian Baptist and High Point Community. And that's not being selfish, prideful. 
That's a calling that God put on me. And I am thankful that I am his servant. And so I just pray that you all have a blessed Easter. And we'll get to that in the closing part of this. But let's get right to what we're talking about today. The two witnesses. Remember in the middle of the tribulation. Now before the tribulation begins, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17 describes the rapture. That means the Christians, those of us who belong to Jesus Christ, who've accepted him by faith, when the trumpet blows, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will caught up together with them in the clouds. Now let me answer that question again because it always comes up. Well, the Bible says when you die, you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Yes, but your body goes in the ground. It's, it's not sleeping. It's dead. But your real person is in heaven with the Lord. And that's God's promise. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. So God is faithful. And then we will be taken up, and at that moment, a seven-year tribulation will begin on the earth. God will allow the Antichrist, which we've talked about in past sessions, to assume authority. The devil will power, power him, and just like there's a holy trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the devil will have an unholy trinity, the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. However, their fate is at the end of this seven-year period. There's only seven years that they'll be about, be around. And uh, God is going to deal with them in the Battle of Gar Armageddon at the end of this seven-year tribulation. Right now, we're talking about the middle of it. It's broken down into th two parts. Three and a half years, relatively peaceful in the beginning because our Old Testament prophets could not see the church age that we're living in now, but they could see beyond the church age and God allowed them to see what would happen uh, right after and during the tribulation so Daniel talks a lot about it in Daniel 9 24 to 27 he talks about a covenant that he'll make with Israel for them to worship in their temple on the temple site right now they're not doing that there's there's war if that were to happen without the Antichrist there would be little literal war but you can see now with this coronavirus and how it's affected the world that there will be a coming ruler that will appear to be like God and appear to be um, that he has all the answers and he will he'll have an answer for everything that's going on on earth but we realize that that's not there yet it could be right around the corner the rapture is the next thing on God's timetable you won't find the word rapture there but it's the catching away of the bride of Christ you see when you came to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you became part of the bride of Christ and the Bible calls him the bridegroom and so the bridegroom Christ is waiting to come and get his bride and what a glorious day that will be and that's why we're trying our best to preach the gospel clearly so that people can understand that the only way of, of heaven is is receiving Christ as your Savior so Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, Jesus Christ paid our sin penalty, and he paid it in full. So when we remember the resurrection, they crucified him on Friday. They buried him, and three days later he rose again. Now, we kind of don't get that 24-hour period with our time frame. Well, you have to go by the way the Jewish people went, a 12-hour cycle from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's why when Jesus was crucified, and I'll talk more about it on Thursday, when he was crucified at 9 o'clock in the morning, he expired at 3 in the afternoon. And they had to put him in the tomb before 6 p.m. because that started another day. See, that's where you get the three days from Friday to Sunday. It doesn't compute with our cycle of 24 hours that we live by here in America or live by today. So Christ made the, the, the payment for our sins, was paid in full, and now we have his spirit to lead us and guide us. That doesn't mean Jesus is absent because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have such a finite mind. We can't grasp everything. God is infinite. He is everywhere. He's in us. He's around us. He's working behind the scenes. 
even during his time. And people say, well, why doesn't he stop this evil thing? He's allowed it to happen for a season. So when this season is over, we need to realize he is preparing us for his coming. I believe it. I believe with all my heart. It's sad that people have to die. But my prayer is that they would have known Christ as their Savior. If not, they need to put their trust in him. And so, let's get to these two witnesses now. Here's what the Bible says in Revelation 11. And I'm in Revelation chapter 11. I'll give you a moment to get there. Revelation 11, I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar. And count the worshipers there. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes down from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying, and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse their bur- them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and one half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At their at that very hour there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and survivors were terrified and gave glory to God, the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. This is right in the middle of the tribulation. You'll notice some things that are said, and we're trying to figure out who these two witnesses are. There's been a lot of discussion over the centuries about who they are, and... uh, we can probably conclude the first one to be Elijah because Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind and he, he did not experience death, physical death. That's found in 2 Kings 2, 9 and 11. 2 Kings 2, 9 through 11. So uh, there were other things. They, they were given the same power, uh, these two witnesses, like Elijah had when he was on earth. And so it's it's easy to say you know what the first one will be Elijah the second one is a little more difficult in that there were two men that didn't see death yet on the earth Enoch was one of them and uh, so we realize that some people believe Enoch was the second witness but if we read a little further and we understand something about the third one is Moses Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage in toward the uh, promised land they crossed the red sea god did mighty uh, mighty mighty plagues came on pharaoh and so you see some of those things happening now it's not going to rain while these two witnesses are here they're going to hold the sun they're going to be in charge they're going to afflict torment on the earth and there's going to be i can you can see it now because we can see through our present day uh, social media you know we have television we have cameras all over the world we can find out what's going on in Israel instantly or Russia any other nation China of course those are the ones that are communists they don't want uh, the United States to know anything about what they're doing and uh, you know some of our some in our country 
uh, are promoting that communist view. And we, we're not communists. We're Americans. Actually, welcome to America because I'm Native American. Welcome to my country. <laughs> I like to say that every now and then. But it's really God's country. Everything we have belongs to God. Everything you have, everything you enjoy, your home, your family, we all belong to Him. And so we don't have to fret during this time. When we have cause to worry, and you know somebody goes in to the hospital, yes, there's great concern. We pray fervently that God will raise them up. I have a brother-in-law, Bill, in the hospital, and he's improving, thankfully. This is the last word I heard. So I'm, I'm very thankful. He didn't have does, didn't have coronavirus. I'm sorry. Um, he was uh, diagnosed with leukemia last year and had a bone marrow transplant, and that went well. And uh, yesterday uh, he had a a stroke on the, on the left side of his body, but he's doing well and improving better. And so we're grateful for that as we continue to pray. I haven't hadn't gotten an update yet today. But we are certainly praying over him, that God will raise him up. So you see, when we have fret in our life, when we worry, we go to prayer. We believe God has the power to heal and to do whatever he chooses to do. But he also allows death to happen. He also allows people to die in the coronavirus. And then as we read in, in Revelation, during a tribulation, again, let me say that the Christians won't be here. So there will be no witness. That's why we talked about the 144,000 Jews last week that he was going to raise up and will raise up to preach the gospel. And another verse comes to my mind, Galatians 1, 8, 9. It says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel and that you have received, let him be accursed. So even an angel can come. And, and if there are fallen angels that follow the devil, they're the deceivers. They try to trip God's people up. And they're trying, they keep people that are outside of Christ that haven't received them yet. They keep them in delusion. And that's happening right now today. So we need to get the gospel out. We need to stand firm on the gospel. It is the reason why the Lord left us here. We're not just talking about information. We're taking the information of the Bible. And the Holy Spirit is sealing it upon our hearts that we might be the people of God today. And we're supposed to be. That we will stand up. Now... If the government came and told us as preachers that you can't preach the gospel anymore, that's when we would say, excuse me, I'm sorry, but we're going to stand up for Jesus and we're not going to stop preaching the gospel. We're going to stand for him because it's the least we could do. On Friday, we will remember his crucifixion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we are yours through faith. And I know, Lord, I, as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to him too. That I believe after this coronavirus, the churches are going to swell. Some will not be able to reopen I don't, because they'll be financially a wreck. But we, we live in God's economy, let me tell you. We don't live according to man's economy. We live according to God's economy. He said in Malachi 3, if there's one way we can test him is by giving to him. And he said... If you do that, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. And so, Father, thank you for your blessings. We don't live for money. We know we need it to survive. And in this tribulation time, people are going to have to take the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. So what about the Christians that are going to come to Christ then? There will be people that we know, maybe somebody in our family, maybe somebody in our extended family, maybe somebody next door. When the rapture happens, we're gone. But the 144,000 will come, and hopefully they will believe the record of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the two witnesses describes here. So the second one uh, is Moses, I believe. Moses... Um, appeared with Elijah at the Transfiguration in Matthew 17. It's interesting, they both were there, and then they went back to heaven. But you remember in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus, and I'll talk more about it on Thursday, when Jesus uh, ascended into heaven, there were two angels that stood by, and they, the men that were watching, the disciples watched them leave. 
And they said, Why stand you here gazing? This same Jesus that has left will come in so like manner to the same spot. So Jesus will come back to the Mount of Olives on that that day, uh, that when that at the end of the uh, tribulation, that's when he will step down on the earth, and then all hell will break loose. The devil and all his hordes would come up against the Lord, and we who are with the Lord will come with him. If you, we'll get to that in the subsequent uh, chapters as we study together, that we will come back with him, and he will defeat the armies of the earth that are against him and the Antichrist who has led them and the devil and the beast and the false prophet will be cast in the lake of fire the devil will be chained for a thousand years there will be a one thousand millennial time where there will be peace on the earth the city four square from heaven fifteen hundred miles wide fifteen hundred miles all the way around will come down and that's where we will reside and we will preside over the earth at that time with Jesus Christ we will have our, we will rule and reign with him the Bible says so we know the future it's hard to go through it right now it's hard to realize that this may be over and this will pass but there may be another one because Jesus said there will be pestilences out of Matthew 24 as we read that so it's interesting that the two witnesses will be uh, martyred and for three and a half days their bodies will be uh, on the streets and they won't even allow them to uh, bury them what a time it's going to be I can see CNN news and all those news are going to be watching and all of a sudden they're going to show these two witnesses stand up and be ascended into heaven a great earthquake where 7,000 people will die God, God is not lying he's telling the truth so get prepared. Be prepared to meet the Lord. Right? If you were to come today, let me put it this way. If you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? A lot of people say, I don't know. Some people say, I hope so. Others say, I think so. No, the Bible says you need to know. And the moment you accept Christ as your Savior, you will know that you are saved. Jesus said something when he was the disciples. He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know me. So if you know Jesus... And you've called him to be your savior. You know who he is. Maybe you've heard about him. Maybe you've been to Sunday school when you were a child. Maybe you've been to church or you looked online and you hear all this stuff going on. You're going, ah, that's a hogwash. No, it's the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. He is the true one. So my prayer is that God will be with you. And we'll talk more about this on uh, Thursday. We'll pick up uh, where the two witnesses come off. And then we'll be talking about the, the dragon. That old serpent, the devil. And his wickedness during these times. Even today, he's deceiving the world. But there's one out there working. The Holy Spirit of God is out there convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Come to him while there's time. Come to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, and uh, I'll be back out on Thursday. Have a great day. Keep praying. Keep giving God honor and glory, and uh, trust in him all the way. Don't let anything pull you down. God is always with us. God bless you.